Uh, yeah, welcome from my side. It's actually my first time I'm here at this meetup, but I've read the book, and that was back in 2008. And at that time, I was um, a project, IT project manager at the Auto Group in Hamburg, so kind of a standard 9 to 5 job. And I was always trying to pursue a lifestyle like this. This is actually me in Costa Rica this year in March. And um, I was surfing because I like surfing, but I was also working there. And I was doing that because I can. And what I wanted to talk to you about today is um, how I'm actually living that kind of work lifestyle. Uh, the introduction said already, I do have um, a startup which is called Fastbill. Um, it's, a, it's an online accounting solution for small businesses and freelancers. So if you want to have a, an, an easy way to write invoices and to collect your receipts and to hand it over to your accountant, this is probably something you should have a look at. Um, I'm also doing several other projects. Um, one of them is my blog, uh, let's see what works.com, which uh, I use to share my experiences on online entrepreneurship. So, um, yeah, take a look at that as well. And find me on Twitter. So, um, what I want to share with you is my the big question I had when I was working at the Auto Group is. Um, why should all workplaces and work habits be the same? The thing is, when I, when I entered the auto group after my studies, that was like a standard job. I was happy. It was a big name, I had nice colleagues, had a good salary, good workshops. So anything was kind of what I, what I thought I wanted to have. But then I realized this is not it. And I questioned myself, why can't it be different? And why can't I go surfing while working? And um, what I realized at that day, at that moment, was that uh, work today, I mean today in 2014, but today also in 2007, and today in 2011, and probably even before, is different. It's different than what you might know from working in big companies. It's different as we all are. I mean, if I look at you guys, there's probably designers and photographers and people that are doing like non-standard work. It's not only about people that are employed in big companies, but it's also about people that, that work in a way on a topic that they love, that they want to do. So it's kind of a passion business. And um, I also had a wish that I wanted to change something. something. It was not about the product. I mean, I was not born to create an accounting software. I actually hate accounting. So, I, yeah, I mean, that is, that is something that nobody wants to do. But that was the point. I realized that everybody hates it. So I decided to co-found a business with my partner, Rene. And um, that was back in 2007. 2011 was the year where, we, where I quit my job at Otto. And this is what we got today. So Fastbird today has around 20 employees. We got three offices in Germany. We got one office in Brazil. We're starting there soon. Uh, I, I myself got two businesses, so two companies, and we're working on several projects, um, like Let's See What Works and Happy Coffee and others. And um, I'm actually currently founding a new startup. So somebody was saying, uh, if, I, if I'm looking for a co-founder, get to me, I'm looking for a CEO. And um, the most important uh, information on this slide is probably uh, we, we did all this without VC. So no external money, no business angels, no venture capital. We just did it our way and this is what came out until today, three and a half years later. And um, the side information is just, just a fun notice um, because travel is a good emotion that to you know, transport the message I want to do. In the last 12 months, I've traveled through a lot of countries and um, I went surfing in Costa Rica, Bali, Dublin, Dublin was not for surfing. Um, <laughs> but I was, I was traveling a lot and I was working in all these places and uh, again, I did it because I, I can do it. And what I want to share with you today is how I actually do this. How, what is, what is the, the prerequisite and what is the requirements um, that I think everybody can or has to fulfill um, in order to manage employees, 25 employees. So this is my case. I mean, this probably applies to, to a business that you might have. Probably it's only one employee you have, probably it's, I don't know, no employee, but 
there's some core messages I want to share with you and that it made it happen for me to work and surf from any place on earth um, even if I have 25 employees. So this is five points I want to point out today. The first one is um, this is my team, it's part of my team. And um, the first important point is that I learned is uh, if you want to um, if you want to get work away from yourself, you have to empower everyone that is around you. So that means, um, for example, um, if, you want to, if you want somebody to decide on, on something that brings your business forward, you have to empower him to make this decision. Everybody knows, or I know, that if the most, the most reason why things are not going forward is um, because you want to decide yourself. And that makes yourself the bottleneck all the time. And it's important to get rid of this situation. So empower people to decide, to make things, to bring things forward. And um, for me, I had to learn that, of course, people are not always bringing the same quality output than I would bring in certain things. In some places, they are better. But that is something I learned and that I accepted to learn or that I learned to accept this way around. And um, yeah, this is how it could work. So empower people, let them make decisions, and let them work their way. So um, I know we only got 15 minutes, and I put a timer up here, and uh, I have to make it short. The second point is pretty obvious. Um, you all have laptops, you all have Wi-Fi, and you all got phones. And um, this is something that is pretty usual in your use environment. But if you travel and if you want to work on different places, like this is our office in Spain and Galicia, um, you have to take care of these things. If you go to Southeast Asia or if you go to Japan or somewhere else, you might not be able to read about Wi-Fi instructions or something. So you have to inform yourself, you have to take care that you're available and you have to be aware that if you want to make like a Skype call, for example, um, you have to have bandwidth, you have to have a, um, or a, a phone um, yeah, and Wi-Fi around. So you, you have to have this infrastructure and you have to take care of this. Um, this is pretty obvious, so I'm going to skip this quick. Um, this is an interesting part. Um, after, after the week I went to Galicia, I traveled to Greece. And in Greece, I rented an Airbnb place. And the reason why I did this was because my father had birthday the week afterwards. And um, he invited me to come to Greece because my parents were on vacation there. And uh, I said, yes, that's cool. But I don't want to fly from uh, Spain to Hamburg to Greece and that all in five days. So what I did, I decided to skip this flight back home and um, try to manage from the office in Greece. So I had the Wi-Fi there, I had this flat there, and um, the most important thing, and that counts in general, is you have to be available. Uh, usually when I step out in the morning from my home, I uh, sit in the car and I, I start the first calls with my, with my team that is in Frankfurt. I said we had three offices and there are some of my team members that are, uh, that are not in, in Hamburg, so I'm gonna call them in the morning. And I didn't change that behavior when I, went, uh, when I was working in Greece. So try to be available as usual. Try to be on the phone, try to be um, on Skype, try to be an email, and uh, just be there. In my, in my situation, it's uh, pretty funny because um, I'm not available at all. So it, it's, not, it's not hard for me to be differently available. Um, when people try to call me, I request them to leave me a message if I'm not available and I'm going to call them back. And if you, if you try to adapt that kind of behavior to your clients, to your team member, that's kind of getting usual for them. So even if you're in Asia or if you're in Greece or if you're somewhere else, people requ always request people um, to leave a message because then you can call them back. And then it's, it's your turn to decide on the time you want to talk to them. And that is, that is one really, really important thing that I learned. And um, yeah, it's kind of about training. Train, train your, your clients, train your team on that. 
Um, <laughs> uh, who of you does do regular meetings on a, let's say, weekly basis or monthly basis? Okay, and is there any meeting you do just because you scheduled a meeting? Yeah, that, that's what happened. That's what happened at Otto. And uh, we had like this weekly jour fixes and this weekly meetups. And um, the reason was because we had a time slot. And I thought, what the hell? It doesn't make sense at all. And um, so one of the, the boo words I established in my company now is uh, the word meeting. And uh, what we do instead is um, I request my, my team or my clients, if they got a question, they have to articulate that, so they have to have a concrete question. They're going to call me. If I'm not available, I'm going to call back. And um, then, I, then they get an answer. And this is it. And using that method is, um, is the way I made it to reduce a meeting from one hour to like five minutes or two. And um, so don't do meetings. Try to avoid meetings at all. It doesn't make sense. If you, have, if you want to have a discussion on something, um, schedule a discussion instead or make somebody call you in order to discuss a point. And then fix the result. Write it down and send it to everybody. But do not do a meeting because meeting is only the beginning. If you have one meeting scheduled, you do it a second time and then you do it a third time and then at one day your calendar, calendar is full of it. So if you want to have the free time and if you want to move yourself and you have to have an empty calendar. And what I do is, um, I do not get in meetings. Uh, instead, I request my team and everybody who wants to have a meeting with me to formulate a question, call me, I call back, and then he gets an answer. It's as easy as that. Um, I know it's kind of tough if you want to establish this kind of behavior with your clients, but um, my tip at this point is make a service out of it. If you tell your client, if you have a question, call me, I'll call you back. It sounds better than let's have a meeting in two weeks. So it's kind of even a better service if you offer that, that kind of communication way than always scheduling a boring meeting. Yeah. I only got one or two slides left. Um, okay, here's the truth. This is not a nine to five job. And that does not mean that I'm working 80 hours or so. I'm actually working, let's say, 35 to 40 hours a week, which is okay, it's a good job. It's a standard time, it's not a four hour work week, but if I reduce that 40 hours to all the projects I'm doing, it might be four hours on every project. So, um, oops, there's a typo in there. Um, you have to take into account that um, your daily schedule could be different than what you, what, you, what you learned in your previous life. Let me give you an example on that. When I went to Galicia, to Spain, to go surfing, uh, we, had to, we were dependent on the swell. Swell is like the, the wave energy, so it changes from day to day. And if you want to go surfing, and um, if you want to have the good waves, in my week when I was there, uh, we could only go surfing in the midday. So it started at 12, and then we had like three, four hours. And um, so I had to schedule my day around this. Um, the usual day was like, like the following. I stood up at eight in the morning. I checked my emails and wrote some important stuff back. Uh, then I had breakfast from nine to 9.30. And then I had um, another two and a half hours from 9.30 to 12, where we had a meeting, or no, not a meeting, but um, like a discussion. So everybody was working on his own stuff. And um, then from 12 to, to 4 p.m. we went surfing, which was great. And then we came back, we had a shower, everybody himself. And, um, and uh, then we had some uh, three more hours to work uh, until 7. Uh, from 7 to 8 we had, um, uh, we had dinner. And then from 8 to I believe 11 or so we, we worked again. So if you, if you um, sum that up, it's, it's still seven productive hours or eight a day. So not, not less than you, than you have in a usual day that you're working here in Germany. And if you take this into account and if you try to schedule your day around what you want to do yourself and what you want to do in your, 
leisure time, that might work. So going surfing in the midday is, does not necessarily mean that you have a day where you're less productive than on any other day. So this is the basic message I want to I want to tell you at this point. And um, uh, this is already the last the last slide. Um, sorry for keeping that so short, but uh, I'm required to not extend the 15 minutes here. Uh, if you have any question on that, on anything, just drop me an email or follow me on Twitter or try my, my website, my blog, my Fastbill product. Um, I invite you to test it all 30 days for free. And um, yeah, enjoy the evening and thanks for having me here. Ah, yeah, it's time for questions. Any question? Yeah, I, I got a standard telecom 90 euros a month contract, uh, so flat, flat fee for, for like anything. And the thing is, it's not important what kind of contract I have. The thing is, I do accept the money I pay extra if I want to be available somewhere else. So let's say if I'm, if, I'm, if I'm a month in Greece and people do not stop calling me, I can do two things. First, I, I, get, a, I get a SIM card in, in Greece and just forward my calls. And the second one is I just pay 100 or 200 euros extra. So your business has to allow that, of course. But um, I try to not care about how much it costs at this point. Next question. Yeah. Skills to go alone. yeah, a good question. Uh, so my background is I basically studied business administration, nothing serious. And um, I did an internship in New York where I met my co-founder. He did an internship in New York as well in the same company. And that was back in 2007. And that was one evening where we met and had some beers. And then uh, a photo was created. Uh, we, I mean, we were really having a good time. and. A photo was created this evening saying uh, business partners in future. We didn't know what kind of project we're going to work in the future, but um, we thought it's worth trying if we have an idea. So uh, he had an agency, a web development agency at that time, and he was um, having this, this fast build project in his background and uh, kind of working on it. And then in 2011, we decided to take the risk and to I uh, somehow finance ourselves for one year um, to try to get enough customers to, to live from. And that kind of worked. So it was, was a risk. But that age, I was, at that time, I was um, 28, 29. So, and I had, actually, I had, I had nothing to lose. Um, not married, no kids, no house, no anything. So if I, I thought if I would not start at this point and take the risk, I would never have found out. So in my case, it all went good, but you never know. I actually started another business when I read the four hour work week in 2008, which did not work. So if something not works, does not work, keep on trying, try and second one, third one, try to get a different co-founder and uh, try to learn from what you've done. That was first. How fast did you grow the number of people in the company and what kind of process do you get them on board, train them in whatever they need to do. Yeah. Um, the, so we started in 2011 with Fastbit, and we were two people plus one student, uh, which we paid 400 euros a month to do some support. And um, at that point, we rented a flat in Frankfurt because I was living in Hamburg at that point, at that time, and Brene was living in, in Saarbrücken. So we were decentral from the very beginning on, and um, we, we met every second week for one week in Frankfurt to build this company 24-7, basically. And then the other, the other two weeks in the month, we, we had our normal work times because we both had good friends and you know, it's not possible to work like 24 hours for a year. And um, we did this kind of models um, for one year and then we reduced that two weekly meetings to one, week, uh, one monthly meeting 
And um, we're growing actually since, uh, yeah, since one and a half years, years, I would say. So it took some time to get traction, to get revenue. And um, what I did the last half year is 60% of my time I spent in recruiting. That means finding people, training people, get them on board and get them to think in that way we think and get them motivated as we are. So it took some time and it's important to spend a lot of time on recruiting. Uh, René, my co-founder, or? No, you are you have 25. Ah, okay. Uh, no, not everybody. Um, we do have people working in home offices. Uh, so the question was, is everybody working remotely in the business? And the answer is, we got three offices, and we require everybody to be in the office until we see that he can do it himself alone. So and if, if we're going to reach that point, um, I would say everybody can decide where he wants to work, but you have to have this, this inner feeling, this inner motivation in everybody, um, and you have to believe in that uh, until you can release people to work from any place. Because if, you, if you're not doing this, uh, we're, we have some students in our team, and you, I mean, if I would tell them, do whatever you want, go wherever you are, uh, it's not gonna work okay. from the beginning. So you have to develop to this point. Have you made bad experiences with that? Yeah. So um, people are leaving the company if they do not fit in this kind of traction. That's it. So thanks. Thank you very much.